Ready? Um, it has been, what, like three weeks since Duskborn came out, and I think the number one deck people wanted me to work on was updated Shifting World and Omniscience. We did play one build with Kona that was green-black. That build was uh, not very good. At least Kona was quite bad. Saga I thought was quite bad. Got a cold open from a chest. I'm going to read you real quick. What's up, Spikelings? I'm your dearest friend and favorite MTG innovator creator, Spiring Spike, here with another amazing stream in my Shark Typhoon. Today, we're innovating on an old... Favorite, Modern John, but no Goyves or Bob's here, friends. Why? Well, because we want to win. So watch as I use my omniscience both on the battlefield and off to rack up trophies by the bucketful. And remember to support the stream with a like, share, follow, gift sub, and solemn printed cloth. This here we go. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So we try to build Kona and Saga to, like, get Spring Lake Jones to tap Kona. Kind of predictably uh, awful. Um, that being said, there's like just a lot of tools that this archetype is pretty interested in. And, uh, you know, the, the ones that we're playing here today are Peer Past the Veil, Drag to the Roots, and Demonic Council. Um, if you're not familiar with these cards, Demonic Council is a uh, two mana search library for a demon. This deck just kind of happens to be a combo deck playing a demon. But if you have Delirium, this is a deck built around getting Delirium. It is just Demonic Tutor. I, last time we played this card, it was bugged on Magic Online. Uh, I believe it's still bugged on Magic Online. Um, I actually wasn't checking last night, uh, but to like reveal to your opponent, that's kind of bad. Uh, we'll see. Um, I will say Peer Past the Veil has been a card that I've liked in the shell. And uh, like one thing, if Peer Past the Veil is discard your hand and draw X cards or X number of types in your graveyard. So I like that this card is both payoff and enabler. This is both a discard outlet for your Gristlebrand Omniscience. And it's also something if you have Omniscience in play, you're going to draw a lot of cards and win the game. I think that that is very exciting. And um, I, I also say that, like, I think it's better than the one ring in the deck so far in my limited testing. Ring was always, like, a little bit weird in this archetype um, where it didn't, like, help set up for your combos. And it was, like, not a very good card to cast off, off of missions. It was, like, fine. It cantripped. But it wasn't, like, the kind of card you're going to cast and win the game with a lot of the time. Uh, again, obviously, ring is fine. But, like, pure past the veil, you cast this off, off of missions, you're going to win the game. And it also sets up for your combos really well. Um, and so our win condition here is a singleton Aetherflux Reservoir, which is a lot less strenuous on the deck than the card the Great Creators, but the card quality is a bit lower. One thing I really like is that you can uh, Demonic Council for your Aetherflux Reservoir, which is really nice. Um, you also kind of have this... Uh, so so if, you, if you end up milling your Aetherflux Reservoir, you have a couple options. Um, the, the biggest one is trying to... <laughs> um, is trying to, like, Utopia Sprawl a bunch onto an untapped green source and then woodland again to copy the reservoir. That's kind of how you're going to end up winning the game. Uh, but you also have a, a one of Shieldred too now compared to the last time we played this shell. And then Shieldred does a couple things. One, it'll either like let you stabilize really hard if you mill your reservoir, your reservoir gets countered. Uh, but also it lets you play around like a disenchant on your Aetherflux reservoir, which isn't like very likely, right? Because if they have disenchant, they're going to disenchant the omniscience. But... What you can do is you can tutor Shieldred with Demonic Council or Traverse while you have Gristlebrand in play or Pure Pest the Veil. You just get to gain a ton of life, and then you get to play Reservoir with a ton of life in play to blast your opponent. And so Shieldred gives you like redundancy to Reservoir, but it's a bit higher card quality than Reservoir. It also gains more life early, so you're kind of just playing a 1-1 one -one split here. And then the big upside to this archetype is not only like these cards too, but you you like you get to play removal spells. You get to play tar fire. You get to play drag to the roots. Drag to the roots specifically, I love that this kills like a lot of lock pieces. Kills main deck blood moon, which is really nice. Um, and you also get to play a real sideboard. You have, you know, veil of summer, haywire might, pyroclasm, soulless jailer for storm. We have four sideboard cards for storm, which is a really t hard, hard matchup. We have fatal push for like the the frog decks and some. Uh, like creature based lock pieces and like getting a real sideboard is really nice card is good too card is like good against hate and stuff but a real sideboard is super super good how's about you storm storm is bad um <laughs> minus one tire fire plus one nameless inversion i'm not going to register nameless inversion i know that you can tutor it with the demonic council i'm not going to put the card in the deck you like you, you you just cannot diminish your card quality by so much nameless inversion is like lightning strike um and like I, 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 if you are demonic tutoring for lightning strike, it is so shitty. You know, like maybe against uh, the harbinger of the tides, but I'm not not about it. Andrew, the tier two for six months of the advance. Thank you so much. Yeah, just uh, yeah. So, so yeah, certainly too cute. And uh, I, this is a deck that I think I really needed to give priority to, despite me uh, being a little bit tired of playing woodland decks. Okay, so we're gonna mulligan the one lander. We're gonna keep this six card hand 
on the draw. Favorite deck so far this season? Uh, my favorite to play has been the Crypt of Agadim deck. Um, I also, I think the Jund Delirium deck is quite, quite strong. We need to play it again with like wild slashes in a tournament someday. I don't know if we're ever going to have time. Well, bro, with the 23 months, thank you. Welcome back. So my opponent's gone Thundering Falls, Surveil, Wooded Foothills into the yard. We might be up against Storm here. Yeah, zero copies of the One Ring. You know, so one thing that was like very funny about the green, red Woodlands deck, and I think other people who picked that list up might agree with this, is that, um... Ring was kind of the worst card in the deck. It is is slow, is clunky. You weren't great at like, um, like playing ring and untapping and comboing, right? Because like if you play the ring without your combo being set up, it's kind of tough to like discard your omniscience and go off in the same turn. Um, so I think we, we at least have a sideboard for Storm. Not gonna be a lot better against them. Uh, it was it was like like it was just it was it was fine. It was you know not an embarrassing card. Wait, why are they doing this? It's kind of interesting. I feel like they would just play a ruby. Probably does not bode very well for me. Uh, I'm going to graveyard this and try to high roll off the rumble. I guess we could keep it and high roll off the rumble. Um, Yeah, wi yeah Wild Slash on the Jundelirium deck I think is pretty important. Okay, so if we had kept the Woodland, then we would have milled over <laughs> Omniscience with rumble. Maybe, maybe we still will. No, not quite that lucky. So this is going to be a game where we're Gonna, we would be going off turn four. We'd be playing the Fable of the Mirror Breaker, discarding Omniscience and potentially peer past the veil should we need Delirium and then trying to win the game with our Demonic Council the following turn. Turn four on the draw against this is probably not going to work. Um, yeah, but like like Ring Ring and the other build just was like kind of kind of mediocre. Peer past the veil is like both uh payoff and enabler. It's better with omniscience in play. I've been liking Peer Past the Veil a lot. There will be situations where the ring will be better, of course. Um but they kind of occupy the same spot. The Hollow and Phoenix deck super fun. Yeah, for sure. I I, I have been really liking the Flage build. I also do recommend that one. Okay, so their wish cost one mana here. Yeah, just even wishing for Pass and Flames with Ritual, Manamorphos, Impulse in the Yard is probably a win here. Assuming they ha their hand is completely blank, which it probably isn't. The Karn Ring package is only good in Slow Combo Mirror. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So they've Legend ruled their Rao. Was that on purpose? Now they're wishing, and now they can't get Pass and Flames. Maybe I'm mis misunderstanding something. They have won this flip, but I don't think they're going to want to flip it here. They do flip it here. Okay, well... What is the what is the card they're gonna cast? They do plus the row, unable to ultimate it next turn. I can't help but feel like my opponent fumbled. I guess he didn't have enough mana to wish for uh, pass and flames though. Then then legend ruling the row has had to have been a mistake, right? Relay. I guess it could be relay. Relay would probably win next turn. Not every list plays relay. They might have wanted to have them both in play. Well, I mean, if if if, if that was their intention, that was a mistake, right? Yeah, I think I think I think I'm I'm just trying to determine if there was any strategy towards it or if it was a mistake. And I don't think there was. There's really any strategy there. Okay, their last card. They they cast Ral. I think I think this is for, that was from their hand, and they just they just lose the wish. Seems like we are up against an inexperienced storm player. Um, and they don't have too many, they, they have, they have to top deck like wish or pass in flames. So, you know, or, or like, you know, impulses and stuff. So at, at the moment, I think we're favored to win. Let's just go ahead and get through this upkeep stop my opponent has for me. Okay. I guess we'll play that. I'm just going to fetch that anyways. One card in their hand. Pluses the row. Plays Wooded Foothills. If they brick, I guess they can get a, a, another look at a Pass in Flames here with the Surveil. Which is a good play. They keep a card on top, though. Then they Reckless Impulse. Sure. They won the flip. Another, a Ritual and a Reckless Impulse. Well, it does, of course, come down to what does this uh, Impulse hit. They probably should have... Impulse first, or Serene's Resolve first, won't matter that much. 
Come on, brick, 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 brick. Strike a rich bloodstained mire. That's a brick, baby. So we should be winning game one against Storm, which is quite lucky. Remember the first time we were playing this deck, we actually won game one against Storm a lot. I missed last week or so because of eager combo. and I'm feeling good. Recommend it. Latest list from Boxfield. I would recommend it. Yeah. Um, I kind of got some confidence shaken in it. Um, we had like a, like a couple bad matches on Thursday, but then someone took it in top eight of the challenge. Like I believe it was the same list. That's what they said when they came in chat, at least. So yeah, I would recommend it. All right, my opponent flips Rao. <laughs> really learning about how the legend rule works. Maybe they want to kill my shaman token. Yeah, I saw Tutors won a Pioneer Challenge and said he's coming back to streaming. I should text him. Very exciting to see his return. All right, so we have to get in, again. We have to get through this upkeep stop. It's a very important. I've used fifty seconds of my clock this game, but we'll we'll be using some more time here. All right, Delirium online. Copy omniscience. Demonic Council. One thing that's very funny is a lot of times you end up tutoring for a demon anyways, even when you have delirium. <laughs> I don't, maybe it's not that funny, but I think it's I think it's kind of funny. Alright, so let's go ahead and traverse for Shieldred. Another upside of Shieldred over the Reservoir. This is so fun. Just pay seven, gain seven. Surely I have won more games with Aether Flux Reservoir and Modern than <laughs> than anybody else. Okay, so we get we have sideboard cards. We're gonna bring in the Souls Jailers, I think cutting the Tar Fires. Um And then I don't think I'm gonna play Haywire Mites. We have Drag to the Roots that can kill their rubies or their Rowls. And I, I love that this can just do both, and so we don't we're not like, okay, I'll play one push, one might, or something like that. Yeah, Tar Fire has been <laughs> surprisingly very, very good. And a variety of decks. Maybe not that surprisingly, just they printed a lot of delirium cards. I think this deck is gas enough for us to include turbo in the name. Well, you don't want to include turbo in the name because people who put turbo in their name is like uh, turbo is never described a good deck. Like usually when someone has turbo in the deck name, it's the, the it's turbo followed by unplayable card or turbo unplayable combo. Because they know they know that the the combo or whatever is unplayable, so like this isn't a, a usual bad card or combo. We're ramping it out, we're turboing it out, so it's better. It's better. It's not it's not as bad as you usually think it is. We're turboing it out this time. I've never I've never really seen turbo described uh, uh, describing a good deck. I'm right, gonna keep this. Is fog unplayable? Uh, I see this as an all caps, so maybe this is an acronym standing for um, a different card. But there's also a badger card called Fog. Fog is not a playable modern card. Unless it's stable to the ring. So hopefully you don't uh, die in turn two. I'm going to name uh, Red with the Utopia Sprawl because I have a, I have a uh, Swamp in the deck but not a Mountain. I think they refer to Turbo Fog. Ah, I see. <laughs> well, Fog is terrible, yeah. <laughs> Why did I take out Karn? You get a real sideboard. You get to play removal spells. Um, uh, the I can, I can for some reason I always forget the name of this card. But Pure Past the Veil is like kind of competing in the four drop slot. Um, okay, interesting that they would ritual before sacking the treasure. This is just minus one mana for them. They hit a Mana Morphos and a Wish. How the Basim Kappa deck do yesterday? We went, we three to the first league and we dropped the second. The second league was very weird. We played against Affinity twice and Grixis Fairies with a bunch of like Snapcaster Flame of Anors. Um, and so Affinity and, and Snapcaster Flame seem like tough matchups. 
But overall, dude, you can't wish here. You have to get a zero drop. <laughs> I guess they're just trying to flip the row. Okay, they did flip the row. Okay, you can flip row. Um, now, my soul jailer does turn off the row ultimate, thankfully, and we can maybe drag to the roots of the row too. But we don't have delirium right now. Oh, if we just draw a land, we can we can go, you know, traverse land and then uh, drag to the roots next turn. I probably will probably ultimate the the round next turn. So it's kind of a weird dynamic where if my opponent has an answer for the route, I think I think I'm gonna just wait a second because if they have like Flame of Nor in their hand, they should cast it now. They keep a card on top. Okay, with them keeping a card on top, I'm just gonna kill this. You know, we all gotta learn somehow, but this is this is honestly the worst I've ever seen a storm player play, if I'm gonna be quite blunt. Alright. Are you reviving on any deck for upcoming RCQ season? Yeah, I wanted to play the mono blue belcher deck and then um, I didn't, I didn't buy the Tomashi stuff, but the Tomashi stuff looks better. So I, I need to buy Tomashis and Wurrs, I guess, and Pinted Prisms, um, for whenever I play an RCQ. Well, I'm not gonna be able to play one this weekend. I'm going to ACL. Um, I was going to go to Tampa for this event that I can't talk about yet. Cause I signed a thing that got canceled. So we'll talk about it later if it gets rescheduled. Um, but Tampa's going to be underwater. I hope, every, I hope all of our Floridians, Georgians, North Carolinians, or Tennesseans are doing okay. Staying safe, staying dry. Why one of Apocalypse? Actually curious. Um, it's a good tutor target in the deck. So it, it does a few things. Like if you have Gristlebrand in play, you can traverse for it and just gain a ton of life. It is also something you can gain a ton of life and then Reservoir if you want to play around Disenchants. If you like mill your Reservoir, you can just grab Shieldred, gain a million life, and just set up to like Woodland your Reservoir the next turn. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, I was excited for the Tampa thing. It'll, it'll probably get rescheduled. It, it, it's kind of good maybe that it's being rescheduled because this is such a busy month for me. I'm, I'm going to ACL this weekend for some concerts. I'm going to Vegas two weeks after that for MagicCon Vegas. We're going to play some sealed PTQs. And then the weekend after that, I'm going to uh, Rin Fair. So, wait, we're playing at Storm twice in a row. Oh, boy. At least we're on the play. <laughs> if we could just 2-0 Storm uh, twice in a row, that would be nice. The The amount of just, like, queue into your worst matchup immediately has, uh, has been pretty tough, like, the last couple, <laughs> last couple weeks. What about a cauldronless splashing a random gristle brand to just have the upside of randomly getting insane value? I mean, we've played we've played decks like kind of built around that interaction, cauldron gristle brand. I even thought that there would be something uh, to do with that, um, with like psychic frog coming out and Bruv bones maybe. But I, I I just have like basically never built a version of that deck that's better than Gorio's. Who am I excited to see at ACL? I'm really only going for Chapel Row. That's really why why me and Esther are going. I don't really know almost any other band. Um, but I have, um, I have a friend who lives down there. We're going to go, uh, she's going to show us around and I'm sure we'll discover a lot of new bands too. I wish Drag Roots was Exile. Uh, why is that? Okay. So I guess I'm going to discard Stomping Ground Gristlebrand. I'm going to be playing hot to go. <laughs> uh, if Chapel doesn't copyright strike me, we will. Okay, so this can find me shifting woodland uh, after I tar fire. 
one problem with this card is I can't if I don't really I can't really cash grab here because I want to keep it on top. But I think this is okay. We can tar fire, get delirium, and also drag to the roots a um, drag to the roots a ruby or a Rao. It's wild that you don't know any other Lambda Chapel. I mean, I just mostly listen to like rap and soundtracks. Um, I don't listen to a lot of like pop and like rock bands or bands in general. I listen to like almost exclusively hip hop and soundtracks, which is a kind of a weird, <laughs> weird thing, I guess. I know Tyler. Yeah, Tyler's going. All right. So can I tutor for shifting woodland, woodland gristlebrand, and keep up drag to the roots? I can't. I can't do all of those things. So I think I'm just gonna go cash grab first, high roll, grab a land. Still have my other fetch land and or yeah. Surveil land of the yard. So you don't know Uncle Jumbo? Uh no. The who? The HU, the Mongolian throat band. I know that. Are they are they gonna be at ACL? Alright, let's uh get dragon. Shield would have been good against double Manamorphos, I guess. Could maybe just slam that with drag the roots up. They're going to have four mana, five cards in their hand. Could definitely die here. Castle Striker Rich, that is... This, okay, <laughs> this bodes well for me. Striker Rich just continues to be the worst card in that deck by so much. It's always so funny. Um, Let's get in. I guess, I guess it's technically better for me to have another treasure token because I might not use the, the mana here. So I could save it for next turn. And then uh, what I would like to find off of this is another copy of Drag to the Roots and an, an Omniscience to discard. So let's see if we can do that. So this can tutor me for either half. I can go to two, I think. Oh wait, I guess I, I died a flipped Rao. It's kind of a problem. I could have also played Shielded and just gained a lot of life. I think we'll be okay. All right, so let's grab the Omniscience, discard the hand size. Drag through it's up. Why not play Shielded? I'm trying to have, I'm trying to put an Omniscience to the yard. I'm trying to drag to the roots. My opponent's uh, Ruby or Ral, so, but I, you know, I, I can, I can only say these things so many times. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Punished. Bringing in the jailers, cutting the tar fires. You know, if we start off one one against storms, it's not you know, something we can complain about too much. Just always the worst matchup with these these combo decks. Better matchup this time by a lot though. Agreed, I guess. I don't know. I felt like the right play. But maybe it was wrong. Tarfire could be a bait card. I I, I, I I don't know what you mean by this. Against Storm, Tarfire does nothing. Besides just be two types in the yard. So usually when someone calls something a bait card. I'm going to keep this on the play. We have like um, 10, or no, 11 with the surveil. 11 looks at a Soulless Jailer we can play by turn 3, which is just just should be a keep. We can even potentially demonic council for one on turn three and cast it. Maybe the second activation is wrong. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's the that's the conversation. Was it right to activate the Gristle Brand the second time? It is usually a pain if the reservoir is 
in the yard. So next turn we can tutor for Soulless Jailer. Over oh oh so be a bait card over playing bolt three damage can do the difference a lot of matchups like killing flip to Johnny the the two types of tar fire is is more relevant I think I think you're gonna struggle to um, name a lot of things like tar fire also just kills non flip to Johnny I think I think you're gonna struggle to find a lot of uh, places where um, tar fire is like really deficient compared to um compared to lightning bolt and the two types especially in our pure past the veil deck is I think. I think almost clearly better. I don't know. It's good feedback though. Is Cash Grab? I didn't say its name. Uh, yes. I think so. Like you don't really want to return creatures or lands to your hand that often. This just puts this is instant speed. It is something that can like uh, grab uh, Fable or Aetherflux Reservoir, which say its name can't do. Can also put Utopia Sprawl, which is kind of minor. It also um, instant speed, Willis card, season extra. It's I, I, instant versus sorcery is kind of a wash. You have a pretty even number of those. Yeah, I, like I don't, I don't know if I would play all all to neck if I did play it. Say its name. Probably would. Is there room for one pirate spell bomber's removal spell you can choose with Rumble Grab? I I don't know. I, that card is like just two mana shock. It's just not. Not good. So I'm pretty tempted to leave up the ability to copy Solus Jailer with Cash Grab and then also like drag to the roots Cash Grab end of turn. Or no, or or just like copy Gristlebrand end of turn. Yeah, let's just, let's just leave up our mana. Isn't Grapple the Past just better than name without all the tech? Uh yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's true. But I think I think I'll just play cash grab instead overall. The extra card is just pretty big, and can, again, grabbing fable is pretty big. Grabbing this is pretty big, because you would really prefer to not have this in the yard if you can help it. Is all in a second instant lose against bowmaster? It's an instant lose if you didn't hold up uh, one mana to tarfire the bowmaster. Yeah, salvage doesn't put fable into the hand, but salvage does see an extra card. It's also harder to cast. Pauses have been really weird. In both in both storm matches, like I, storm players are just like taking their ADHD medicine, working at their job, chugging coffee, then turning over and comboing or passing the turn. As a storm playing ADHD coffee addict, they feel attacked. Well, you should embrace it. You are what you are. You play, I'm playing Bellatra on the phone. Okay. I guess we could hit Omniscience off this Rumble and go off this turn. Oh, I, sorry, I missed out another one of these. I guess I can still... Just put it on my other basic forest if I if I really need to. But I, I think I think what I would really like to do in this spot is um cast Solus Jailer with uh root with a drag to the roots up. I'm a bit worried about getting <laughs> just manual grape shot it again, I guess. It's kind of tough to do it for 11 with two soulless jailers in play. So we can go this, naming uh, black, and then sec play these two for the second jailer. Nine cards in hand. Discarding omniscience, discarding cash grab, probably. What's the reason for Aetherflux over card into Aetherflux? Well, it's one card instead of... Uh, it's like you play one copy of this instead of like your entire sideboard is is really nice. Like, I, I think if you're playing this kind of s slightly slower build that's playing a lot of removal spells, it's um, it's going to be better for you to to play just one reservoir instead of a Karn and then like twelve artifacts in your sideboard. Karn Karns were good though. You could play one X Karn, one X Aetherflux inside, and like two other Karn cards. 
Uh, you could, you could. Reservoir is also like just a lot better with Gristlebrand too. Okay, they Veil of Summoned my drag to the roots. Yeah, Jailer doesn't stop wished cards, but it stops Passing Flames and then the um, um, Rinse Resolve cards. Six cards in their hand, Storm Count five. Hopefully don't get Grave Shot out of the game again, just like because we paid too much life. The Legend Ruler Gemstone Caverns. Five cards in hand now. Doesn't that open you up to random hate if you need Karn for Edgebook so that he suddenly stops the combo? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't... I, I, like, I like building the deck this way. I've spent a lot of time on it. Obviously, you could build the deck that way. All right, they find a Manamorphose, and then uh, my opponent Grape Shots me before playing Manamorphose with no mana floating. I think they just messed up. They're killing the Jailers. I guess, so is their plan just to kill the Jailers and then go off next turn? I'm really shocked they didn't just Manamorphose first, but maybe... They're just, I mean, they, they should know they're not getting a next turn. Yeah, this this was a this was a mistake. I think. I'm gonna target omniscience here. Oh, the jailer stops the metamorphos. Duh. Sorry, 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 sorry. I take it back, opponent. For some reason I I forgot about that. Okay, uh, Paul is smart, genius, ADHD, Swarm player. <laughs> yeah, no, I did just say it stops those cards. <laughs> Why is Gemstone Caverns a legend? Well, I mean, to stop you from having three, four mana turn one. Yeah, too much trash talk today. Well, I'm not going to mulligan. But it does keep seven. If we can if we can beat Storm twice in a row for our first two matches with Woodlands combo, I will be quite the happy camper. Um, or even green? We do not want to see a ritual being cast. Okay, Reckless Impulse revealing Veil vale Summer Reckless Impulse. Let's go rumble into Jailer. Um, taking land over Utopia Sprawl. We will have Delirium when we crack a fetch. We'll have Sorcery, Instant, uh, Instant Sorcery, Enchantment Land. Then we can go Fable, a uh, rumble into look for another Jailer, um, and then play a, a Fable if we miss. It'd be, I guess it would be kind of interesting if we hit a second Jailer and we hit a Fable next turn. My opponent is able to Static Prison. So a Drag to the Roots would be an answer to that. Then they're going to play this Impulse, hitting another Static Prison and a Manamorphose. So I guess we don't really want to put another Jailer in place so badly, huh? So this is kind of interesting. I do think we have enough... Oh, we only have two more Utopia Sprawls in the deck, so it's going to be tougher to, like, second Woodlands copy Reservoir. Oh, yeah, the Jailer stops the Static Prison. I don't, I don't know how I keep for blanking on this. Obviously, that's the that's the case. Okay. We should maybe have, like, one Regrowth in our deck to, like, buy back Reservoir if we play it. I went to a Mavs game last night, a pre-season pre game. Pretty sleepy. Yeah, I probably could drink some water too. They do have another Static Prison in their hand. And then they Ritual. Two cards in their hand only with no Ruby in play. There's a Ruby. Yeah, maybe Balagad. Probably Balagad over Regrowth or Eternal Witness. That was the game. It was uh, it was fun. Uh, the Memphis they had a, a Japanese player who's like five eight, and he was like he was really fun to watch. Um, two cards in their hand. It would be 
tough to lose this one, but we might. Go after my sprawl. Okay, two cards in their hand. Five energy, three static prisons. And I found Soulless Jailer number three. So let's play this and then cash grab. I guess we could main phase cash grab to try to hit our land drop. Seems okay. All right, you have three static prisons. I have three Soulless Jailers. Good morning, Spikelings. Does my opponent have the fourth static prison? They have a 5 8 player in 7 4. Yeah, I think I think they were both on, in play at the same time, and it was very cool. Yeah, but the, the player is, is like Kawamura, I think. It might have been Yuki Kawamura. I might be misremembering. Uh, but he was he was very fun to watch. But like he was he was fast, he was quick, and like you could kind of tell like people were just not <laughs> used to guarding someone that, that was that's that the height too. So they don't pay so that they can keep these other two prisons in play for an extra turn. They play Gemstone Caverns. Now, because my reservoir is in the yard here, um, and and because I only have one more Utopia Sprawl in the deck, I guess I guess I could cast, I could cast, I could play another Woodland. I could play one Utopia Sprawl and one Rumble, and then copy. So maybe the, maybe we'll be fine. I also have a Shieldred in my deck, which I can I can probably get to uh, to win the game this turn. But my opponent has a Veil of Summer, and I just want to cycle it right now. It says, well, I tried GG's. I don't think they realized it was going to be a little bit trickier for me to get there. Okay! Worst matchup for Woodlands combo, Storm. Our first two opponents, both Storm. We advance 2-0. Is Shielded a Frexy Demon? Shielded is not a demon. But if you have Delirium, you can Demonic Tutor for it. Let's keep this hand on the draw. That's our hardest matchup. We're gonna five zero. Well, hopefully we just can play a different matchup. Yeah, yesterday we we played against Affinity this Affinity twice in a row and Fairies. It was very funny. Okay, my opponent's gone Arid Mesa. Go, please do not be the third Storm opponent in a row. Give me Just Guy Control. That's the best matchup. That matchup is like, I guess this version is not as good against it. That looks like what we're up against, though. Yeah, this version's, I guess, not quite as good, probably. Maybe, like, a little bit more fragile to, to interaction. You have, like, less wind conditions. Ooh. 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 <laughs> okay. Swings. Okay, sorry. I guess I should do this. So I'm gonna name red. I'm gonna main phase my crash, my cash grab. Then we'll grab Verdant Catacombs over the Overgrown Tomb, probably. No super relevant cards milled. Do you think Zoo is still a strong deck in modern? Yeah, I think I think Zoo is quite good. It's been it seems to be putting up good results too. I will say, you should not play Wild to Coddle in your deck. You should probably play Guide and Pride over Ragavan to Coddle. Um, and consider playing a Johnny over Bowmaster or Neshoba Brawler, depending on which version you're playing. That is, that's my advice to you. We've done that on stream. I, I guess we maybe need to do it on stream again. I kind of forgot we're going to maybe do that this week. I uh, might still do that this week. Uh, but I, I just I, I encourage you to not just just that there's a higher quality <laughs> higher quality one drops available that are also not stubborn denial en enablers to play them. But um, also do what you want. Okay, there's our first peer past the veil. Notably, we don't have delirium at the moment. My buddy wants to keep replacing the energy cards for Ragavan Nakato. Well, I don't know if they're replacing the energy cards if they're doing that more instead of just playing the stock list that everyone else is playing. I do think Zoo is a good deck. I do think Guide and Pride are better than Ragavan Nakato in the deck. So that's what I recommend you play. 
it does seem like there's um some points of contention. Okay, so we'll flip Adelphia the Saga. Then let's go ahead and cash grab. Looking for an omniscience in the yard. We uh, completely... Wow, that was the worst cash grab I've ever cast. We not only didn't get Delirium, well, we didn't put a card in our hand. <laughs> we hit Council, Peer, Drag, Council. Pretty tough, so just, you know, keep churning. This is definitely the match. If, if you're going to, like, brick this hard in any matchup, it is. this is the matchup to do it in. Let's see, man, got a part of a ragamuffin. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I see. All right, there's a ring. We're flipping the Tamiya next turn. One problem with keeping the rumble is that it's not very good to... It's not very good to... Uh if I'm going to double loot, but I think there's a very high chance my opponent Wrath the Skies next turn. I guess you could have put Traverse on the stack and then Pierre. Yeah, but I I, had, I don't have another basic in the deck, do I? I guess I, actually, I guess I do have one more basic. I think there's a, a good chance to go land Wrath the Skies for three. They're playing the no energy version. Uh, what about what my opponent has done indicates that? I've seen Tomio in energy builds. I've seen Solitude in energy builds. I've seen Prismatic Ending in energy builds. I've seen Katria Triumph in Binding. It's like just not that tough for them to play like three tunes and three Wrath the Skies with these cards. But I, I, I but, but if, if they, let me know if there is something I'm missing because like, like let me know if there is like my opponent had one prismatic ending and one solitude and one katria trap which means never this is never wrath this guys interesting attack imagines for free oh i forgot, i did forget about the pro <laughs> how do you feel about arena glory and counter spell deck i mean it's just definitely correct to play arena of glory and your just guy uh control decks this is jarek's list no skies Kind of, kind of unhinged to not play Wrath the Skies, but uh, it's interesting. I'm definitely not complaining. Let me take a look. Interesting indeed. I guess maybe Verdict is better with all of the Murktides going around. Okay, so I could, I guess, I guess I just, yeah, I guess I don't discard anything. It's just better to go rumble than peer if I don't find omniscience. Although maybe I could have thought about snare a little bit more. Draw four, hopefully. All right, we're churning. I believe I think both these back to block the flage. I guess they're not gonna. I guess they could, they got two more flages and kill me. Okay, now that's not a problem. All right, pitching supreme verdict. They're gonna have a, a ton of cards in their hand. Um, we'll see what happens. Kind of glad to see less four color nowadays. Yeah, people have always disliked the four color Omnath deck. That archetype is uh, certainly quite bad. So if they grab the spell snare, we'll just loot away the cash grab with uh, our fable. They do grab the spell snare. Omniscience. I guess I should keep the cash grab because I just have a lot of twos. Also, I guess this was a punt, but I was probably supposed to... I was probably supposed to upkeep copy Fable and, and then do it again next turn. 
They are just going to counter this. I'm out of surveillance. What is a good mana value for an instant speed? Draw four. Uh, five mana is probably... Like the, I mean, opportunity costs six. I mean, in limited, that was like... Let's, I'm just actually going to see to this now. Uh, in limited, um, opportunity was like a crazy card, I remember. It's like unbeatable in, in its uh, draft format, almost. It was super slow draft format, I remember. Play at least one might. They're playing all these bindings. The second might's probably okay. Yeah, I kind of just want to... I guess we'll just play, like, Might over Drag to the Roots. Hit one Roots, maybe? One Blue Blue could be possible, but likely strong. Uh, possibly too good. Probably too good, honestly. Just unconditional draw four for four manas at instant speed is kind of crazy. Um, This hand is very nice, so we can surveil into a land. I think I would keep on the draw mulligan on the play. about into the story like i mean into the, into the story was like a pretty good card and that was like a pretty conditional um pretty conditional draw four for four mana so i guess we just graveyard this and then we can demonic council for gristlebrand next turn and then we just have the combo Bummer. We have a drag to the roots. So let's um let's wait on demonic counseling until after we maybe drag to the roots of the lantern. They find the ring. Okay, this is slipping away from us pretty quickly. Yeah, Narset is even more of a problem for us in Lancer because we're in on Gristlebrand instead of uh, Karn. So that's, I guess, a dynamic I haven't been thinking about too much. You said before Into the Story Without His Condition was the best card draw spell ever printed. Is that still true after Image 2, Image 3 Ring? I don't know. I mean, 4, four mana instant speed draw 4 doesn't exist. If it did exist, I it would be like pretty exciting, I think, in a in like a wizard style tap, you know, you know, an instant speed control deck. I, I think it would be quite good. Would it be better than the one ring? I don't know, but it, it's also just not a card that exists and not a card you can play with. So it's not really something I think you can say with much confidence one way or another. But it would it would be quite good, I think. Four mana, draw four, instant speed. We drew 24 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Appreciate you. Second ring. Definitely a tough curve to beat. I'm pack it in, I think. Historically, control our best matchup. Kind of pretty unlucky draws game one. But I think I'm okay beating Storm twice, losing to control, I guess. On the draw against a Gigantha, I'm going to keep this. If it's energy, we have two tar fires. It's pretty nice. It is um, Domain Zoo instead. And then their second main phase, they play Wooded Foothills and Pass. Final thoughts on yesterday's Cannoneer deck. I mean, I guess my final thoughts were that I wanted to play some more. We had like a nice looking first league. We did go through two, but I thought the deck was looking nice. And then we played against Affinity Affinity Fairies, and it didn't seem like we were very well equipped to deal with that, but I don't know how important of a data point that is. On the copy on the play is tough for us.
Like, we would just be set up to uh, turn three combo if we were on the play or if they just weren't on Kavu here, but uh, they are on Kavu here, so things are going to get tougher. We could maybe just peer past the Veil end of turn, though, dump this, draw our hand. Uro doesn't see any play in Timeless, it's too slow. Um, I mean, I haven't been playing Timeless in a while, but when I was playing Timeless, I was, like, crushing with Uro, but this was... You know, I guess this was pre-image three, so I I wouldn't doubt that things are different now. I I when I was playing it, I felt like it was the best card draw spell in the format. So we at least we can tar fire the bowmaster, but he's gonna mess with my pure pest the veil. Yeah, I kind of want to play some timeless with like Woodland Uro Fanatic of Ronus. Like that sounds, that sounds very fun to me. I don't know if I don't know when I would play it. Them discarding Bolt is pretty scary. They probably have a Flames, or yeah, something like this. So I need to mill another Omniscience, which is not the most likely. Probably toasted. Should have won the die roll. Okay, so on the play against Domain Zoo, these tar fires are pretty bad. Haywire Might hits both their ley lines, and sometimes they play Rest in Peace. So I think I'm interested in these. I'm interested in the Fatal Pushes. We do have Drag to the Roots, too, so maybe I don't need this many Haywire Mites. Maybe just play two, and then we could trim. Maybe a Pure Past the Veil. There's no way they're printing the whole Uro cycle into Modern eventually. I don't, I don't know what you mean by the whole Uro cycle. Uh, all, all of the Titans have been modern legal. They've banned Uro. They might they might make more, but I, I don't think they're going to make a more Titans in all, like all the two colors. I think they're, I think they're probably done. All right, another Mulligan. Very close one lander. Keep this. I think I'm going to put back up here. It's kind of close. Titans are pretty bad design. Maybe. You know, when, when Titans were printed, like, Magic was entering a pretty different philosophy. Like, they, like, very explicitly did not want you to get mana flooded ever. Like, you were, you, if you played Magic the Gathering, you were, uh, and you got mana flooded, it was a fluke. There were Companions, there was Uro, there was Mystic Sanctuary, there were a ton of new MDFCs. Like, all of these mechanics were just, like, so explicitly designed for you to never get mana flooded. Um, and they, they kind of have pulled away from that a little bit. Uh, the cards like shifting woodland, yeah, or flage, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not, but like, but yeah, but companion, companions, escape cards, uh, um, mystic sanctuary and MDFCs, all, all, all of these were like really format defining cards that were printed explicitly so they would try to they were they're trying to like design flood mana flood out of the out of the game that was that was really the 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 thought i think it's not that only printed it's not the only titan that's not printed yet that exists into the story is the demir one show i i have not i don't i don't, I don't know what card you're talking about i would love to, to see it though i I didn't know is I didn't know there was like a commander only like Demir Titan if that's what you're saying. Okay, um, let's traverse. I think I'm just grabbing a another land here, and then I'm gonna try to drag to the roots, and I guess I'll do it upkeep. Drag to the roots of the Kavu. In the Theros lore, there's only one single Titan that's not a card. Okay, oh, that's what you're saying. I thought that I thought that there just was um, there was like a commander only Titan I didn't know about. So they do have the stub. That's not good. I, they can't stop now. My Azurus Titan that exiles target creature. You gain life. Draw three cards. <laughs> and and it also says Swords of Plowshares is legal and modern. 
<laughs> what sorts of plowshares really be so broken and modern, Spike? I'm not a blue-white control player. I just really want to know. I want to ask about sorts of plowshares every single day. <laughs> I, I think it would be totally fine, actually. Be totally fine. <laughs> they printed solitude. That's like a zero mana swords to plowshares. Hmm. I think I'm playing Fable. It's kind of close. Why are the control players British? Have you ever met a control player? They're all British. Yeah, that's another burn spell. You put it GG's. Blast you. Let's play for 3 2. Although all modern MTG streamers start off as blue white control gamers me included i don't have a blood crypt in the deck but if i did i could go sprawl and black blood crypt into shielded with this hand i don't have one so i guess i'm just gonna name red and then the uh, fable can give me my second black harry wasn't even a control player harry was so explicitly almost exclusively a control player for a long long time and then when he started playing youtube he is you know a bit more diversity it was the last time he played blue white control last time on stream and and last time on stream, I you know I haven't not been playing a lot of like like paper magic, paper modern. It's um, <laughs> it's it's it, I'm basically all my magic right now. I'm I'm playing is is for the stream, but a lot of like off stream prep for it still. Okay, we played just guy control build twenty eight days ago, just like with binding. So like yeah, about a month. The Titan is described as. The primordial feat of a starless night of eternal darkness. That is very cool. So we're up against the uh, the Belcher deck. This match was pretty interesting, probably because we're both slower combo decks. They have a lot of counter spells, but my my build is kind of inherently resilient to counter spells. What about instant speed lay down arms instead of swords? Watsy could print that. You could also just play lay down arms and not be so greedy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Lay the Arms is fine. It's like a fine removal spell. Also, blue-white players, you have access to Prismatic Ending and Leyline Binding, which are probably the two best removal spells in modern right now. Maybe st Static Prison also. It's like there is there are put that you have no shortage of good targeted white removal spells. Solitude Flage. Flage is, you know, you're playing Flage if you're playing white. You are fine. <laughs> you do not need Swords of Pleasures. You have plenty of tools. Build, build a dang deck. Oust is like so based. No one, no one knows about Oust. <laughs> if I'm ever just like slamming Shielded here, I think I'm gonna discard Commercial District Fable. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm just gonna slam the Shielded. Preordained Belcher. I played some Preordained Belcher. I think it's pretty solid. Okay, so let's attack. I guess they might force this, though. Sure. All right, so let's over to Grown Tomb and uh, perform a cash grab. So if I grab Reservoir, I lose Delirium. So let's just grab a land. I can get Delirium with the, the Tar Fire pretty easy. Yeah, this... Do you think Zoo is favored in the Boros matchup? I, it depends more on the build of Boros than anything, but if Boros is playing four rings, four static prison, I think it's favored. Um, which I think is I think is what most people are doing at the moment. So I I um I would I would say it's favored to Boros, but I mean you have a lot of tools, like you have binding for their rings, which is really nice. You have um, um 
you have a uh, stubborn denial for their static prisons on your ley lines. Ley line scion can be quite good against them. You can even like binding their static prisons and like instant speed as a comeback trick. Play draw matters a lot too. Do you still do you have Ragavan in your zoo deck? You're worse against Boros. This is this is another thing. If you if you're just still on Ragavan, you're way worse against Boros, but you're better against the combo decks. So I love drawing a rumble here, of course. Let's go ahead and attack first. So let's hard fire the uh, trainer first so they can't flare my uh, rumble. We find a second fable and we find the shieldred. Now, pretty sure I'm just slamming the shieldred. I think I'm going to surveil and, and cash in all my treasures, effective treasures. Did the Belcher plus untapped land. A thought experiment me and my friend had us. How bad would pay X mana, reveal this card from your hand and draw a card, not be broken. Oh, just like at any time, activated ability, like a tome, like the the four mana top draw card. I mean, there are foretell cards that are kind of like that, but not quite as good. There are four, forecast, yeah, forecast, not foretell. I mean, we, we ain't been belched yet, so that's good news. Could get away with three mana. I mean, you could get away with three mana sorcery speed, but at instant, at instant speed in your wilderness reclamation deck, you're just draw, 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 draw. It's also kind of interesting that like you um like it's bad at multiples for whatever that's worth. I would say two or three mana is not so out of mind. Two mana best card draw spell ever printed. I think. Also, like what's the color cost? Is it colorless in your Tron deck? Draw, 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 draw. Yeah, I mean it, I don't I don't think it's like a good design space in general. I don't think I don't think you should. I think I think you you need to have conditions to do your things. Okay, so we're attacking for, um, wait, is it really one short? We attack them for eight? Yeah, I guess it is one short. Dang it. That's a draw six. Gain 12. Can try to find a tar fire. Probably gets like flared though. Well, you got a belcher, you got to win. Close one. Oh yeah, Whispers of the Muse, six mana. <laughs> and, and counterable. Getting, we're probably going to get belched here. If we do get belched, I'm going to take a look at what their build is. Oh, okay. Two mana can see the game. Let's go. Um, so let's bring in all these Veil of Summers. Solus Jailer stops Lotus Bloom from coming down. Haywire Might can kill Lotus on upkeep. Can also kill Belcher if they tap out for it. Seems like something I want access to. Let's maybe play one Solus Jailer as like a Traverse Demonic Council two to target. Um, do you think I probably need the Shieldred because of their density of counter spells? The Fables seem pretty dang slow. Counterspell not God in Belcher builds. I I think Counterspell is very good in the blue Belcher deck. You're like you're 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 a very slow deck in general. Like you you sometimes win on turn four, usually win on turn five. So you need to go like counter counter combo, and then Counterspell is also just two mana protect your Belcher from their interaction too. I'm a big fan. Counterspell is like just one of the best cards of modern. I think I think when you when you talk about best cards of modern, uh, it is kind of interesting. We don't we don't even like mention Counterspell almost ever, but it's like like Blue Black Frog is not really a deck that can exist without Counterspell. Just Sky Control without Counterspell would be so much worse. It's like qu quietly just like one of the most imp important format staples. Like so like just the best Counterspell in the format. 
I can't wait for the gifts variant of this deck. It's coming. Uh, I did think about it some. Um, I also had a gifts lamplight phoenix deck that um, was close. Why do we get away from the card win con? I feel like it was also part of the deck. Well, you get a real sideboard. You get to play these cards too. Um, you get to play removal in the main deck, which is like it's like what one big problem is like. Like all of the main deck blood moons out of Boros is so tough, and like being able to drag to the roots is nice. You you could like Karn for an answer or like Traverse for a Besaju, but drag is like a lot faster of a card. Um, the main deck Tarfire is also slow Boros down so much. I don't know. You can still play that build too if you prefer it. Streaming one pure pass. Don't have time to cast it. Well, it's still like a really important card to have as like I like I think it's better than Fable overall maybe it is one more mana but if you have omniscience in play it's something that's just going to win you the game where fable is like kind of do nothing with omniscience in play so you kind of need a density of i have omniscience now i can win the game um and it's also cyber games may be slower with me having a good amount of interaction but i, I could be i could also just be wrong it could be right to build it how you're suggesting haven't seen a logic knot since image two. I think I'm. I think I've registered logic knot. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess one time since image three. I love. I love Boxfield. I could just. I could just search the name of the card and I can see the last time I played it. Um, nope, I have not played a logic knot in image three, which is probably a mistake. Probably a mistake. Like surely in some of the wizard builds, like the first logic knot was correct. Dude, yeah, Logic Knot up the Beanstalk was so sick. It was just, ah, what a time that was. Yeah, the one of Shielded's been really good. It was like, that was kind of like what got me to like bring the deck to the stream was figuring that part out. So yeah, we thankfully brought in that Solus Jailer that we could probably just traverse for or counsel for before these come down. House Council, but I like Council a lot in this deck. I, I'm kind of wanting to see if there's like another shell for Demonic Council. I'm kind of thinking about um, Falahi Archaeologist plus Flare Denial plus Demonic Council in like an Ad Nauseum style combo deck, but I'm not sure how easy Delirium is to assemble beyond uh, playing Archaeologist. You play Logic Knot and Beans. Well, I've played a lot of Logic Knot overall. Yeah, I've got a lot of Logic Knots in the mox field, but just, I haven't played any since MH3 came out, it seems. So instant sorcery. I could leave this in the yard and guarantee delirium. I think that's actually just fine in this kind of matchup. Delirium after I crack the wooded foothills. It's gonna cast this rumble though. We don't need to traverse quite yet. Um, yeah, I think I'll just leave Gristlebrand in the yard so I can copy it with Woodland. A little bit punished for the Utopia Sprawl, but it's like, not like the Utopia Sprawl is like doing anything either. So, do I have enough mana to Demonic Council for Veil of Summer and then Traverse for Solus Jailer? So, I'll need six mana. It looks like I'll have five next turn, so math is not quite there, I guess. No written six in the deck for Delirium with more. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'll just top deck a veil. Not quite that lucky. Maybe I should have uh, surveilled first. See if I've been omniscience. That's, that's probably correct. Do you think the format is too fast for written six Besage loop? I mean, written six Besage loop is good against some decks. Um, but it's uh, it's not very. It's, I guess it's not terrible against Boros because they have the static prisons. But like this is something you can include in your deck. But it can't be. It it can basically never be your plan A. Hmm. Would my opponent ever counter Haywire Might here? I don't think that they would. I, I'm just gonna grab Solus Jailer and hope they're on like Force of Negation. This doesn't seem like a, a great plan. Okay. Maybe they have a uh, bounce spell. I don't think I'm going to cast my demonic council yet. Maybe they have nothing. This Lotus Bloom has been jailed. 
think I'm kind of getting the vibe that they didn't realize that the jailer would stop the lotus blooms. Gorios with council. Maybe. I don't. I just. I kind of in general like the card, and it, it's something I'm interested in uh, exploring a little bit more deeper. Could I, you could maybe put in the Crypt of Agadim deck, like so? So I started to build Crypt of Agadim with um, Heartless Summoning, and then the Image Three Four Drop that like tutors equal to your devotion in black to black, but you lose through life. Uh, that deck did not do very well last night, and like I'm probably abandoning it. But maybe, uh, maybe like Delirium is pretty easy to assemble in that deck. Maybe Demonic Council is um, something we could play there. I'm gonna attack with my Gristlebrand. I think, I think so. I speak for the trees. I want to see you come up deck today. Thank you for the speaking for the trees and oftentimes overlooked part of this community. Um, I, 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 so I have a backup deck. I'm pretty excited for. I'm also kind of like. <laughs> I, 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 I'm talking about this Demonic Council uh, Overlord build and getting kind of excited too by putting this card in the Crypt of Agadim deck. Yeah, it's, yes, yeah, it seems like they messed up. Looking for an omniscience to Ben. There we go. A Veil of Summer could be nice for next turn. But I'll just, I, I can also just like keep an omniscience in my hand and like cast it off the first one. Riddles with Twitch Prime, thank you for coming back. Hope you're doing well. They drew it. Yeah, maybe they drew it for turn, but I I, I was definitely with that pause. I was really getting the vibe that they um, did not realize this would work that way. Thunder Trap. So they're grabbing a sink into the stupor. Can you recur the reservoir? You can with you can copy it with Woodland, and what you can do a lot of the time is, um, you can like draw your deck with shield. Like you can like you can draw your deck because you tutored for Shieldred, and then you can cast a combination of like of, um of a uh, utopia sprawls and rumbles so that you can copy your uh reservoir from the yard in the same turn cycle sometimes on your opponent's turn if you have to use the same reservoir okay so let's go ahead and demonic council for veil of summer so this way if my opponent has like into the flood mall plus force of negation I, I can go copy omniscience cast omniscience uh if they count omniscience i would let that go but i can i want to be able to i want to be able to veil of summer the bound spell on my omniscience I guess I would be able to counter spell. I will say I like Demonic Council a lot. I like Drag to the Roots. Pure Pass the Veil I was liking more yesterday. Maybe it's maybe you should just play Karn over Pure Pass the Veil. Okay, so they counter spell this. That is okay. Because now they don't have mana for a bounce spell up. So copy omniscience. No surgical, please. Thank you. So cast omniscience. Not that I think there's anything that bounces this. Maybe I should have uh, dragged to the roots this first. I will do that now. So if my, if my opponent can't flare my Aetherflux, if they force of negation Aetherflux Reservoir, that that is a problem. I guess I guess I I could peer past the veil looking for a veil of summer in response, but then I wouldn't be able to get the Gristlebrand in play. So I, I guess I probably should have cast Gristlebrand first, right? I want to see the spot where we flux so many life that Belcher doesn't kill us. Well, the problem is Belcher on taps, but that would be pretty fun. All right, we're at sixteen. Not very hard to uh, 
get up to enough spells. I, th- I only have 18 cards left in my deck, so I'm actually just going to peer instead of rumbling, though. I think rumble is like, I get to cast less spells this turn. So I'm at 51, or 50 exactly. So the one pro- I, I've done this on stream at least once, but you don't you do not want to click your Aetherflex Reservoir when you're at 50 life, I tell you what. <laughs> I tell you what. All right, I blast you. 50 damage. 3-2. Three, 3-2, two. Three, two, pretty nice. Um... I don't know. I still, I still want to work on this build some more. I, I really am liking what the black cards are bringing to the deck. I feel like I missed. P- I, I feel like Karn is maybe better than Pier, so you could maybe just cut Gristlebrand, and then I guess, I guess you would cut Reservoir, um, Reservoir, and the Piers for four Karn, and then you're cutting the second Gristlebrand. I don't know if you're playing Shieldred still. I have been liking Shieldred a lot, but it's like way worse when you're not on the, like the, the just Gristlebrand plan. Um, you could maybe still play a couple Peer Past the Veils when you add Karn. That could be kind of interesting. So you would be like two Peer Past the Veil, four Karn. Something to try. But I'm going to pivot over to our backup deck today, which is something I've been pretty excited for. So what's kind of weird about this deck is um, this is... 